We'd just finished our dinner, and I'd gone in the den and turned on the TV. When she walked in and kissed me on the cheek like a million times before. And she said, honey, I know it's late, but if you don't mind, my shopping's gotten a little behind. So I think I'll drive downtown to the grocery store. Well, I didn't look up, just nodded okay and asked her to hand me an ashtray. And when she did, I reached over and squeezed her hand. And then she left me. And I shuddered a minute at the thought of my world without her in it. And I reassuringly sought the touch of my wedding band. Well, I must have been dozing because I didn't hear the door. And I thought, now that's strange. I'd never done that before. But I looked up and she was standing by my chair. Kind of snuck in on me, I said. And she smiled and nodded her head. And I told her that she looked just like an angel standing there. For a long moment, she didn't say a thing. And then she caressed her gold wedding ring. And I thought I saw a teardrop in her eye. Honey, you'll never know how much I love you, she said. And I thought of the many years that we'd been wed. As I told her that no one could be as happy as I. And then the strangest feeling filled the room. Not one of happiness, but one of gloom. And for the first time in my life, I saw sadness in her face. I reached out to touch her and she drew away. And she told me again that ours was a love that time could never erase. And then I thought I heard a thousand voices singing. But I realized it was the telephone ringing. And that's when I saw the halo surround their pretty golden hair. I turned trembling to the receiver and heard a cold voice say that there'd been a wreck out on the highway. And I knew that when I looked back, she wouldn't be there because it was an angel's way of saying our last goodbye. I was on the outskirts of a little southern town trying to reach my destination before the sun went down. The old CB was blaring away on channel 19 when there came a little boy's voice on the radio line. And he said, Breaker 19, is anyone there? Come on, back truckers, and talk to Teddy Bear. Well, I keyed the mic and I said, you got it, Teddy Bear. And the little boy's voice came back on the air. Appreciate the break. Who we got on that end? I told him my handle, and then he began. Now, I'm not supposed to bother you fellas out there. Mom says you're busy, and for me to stay off there. But you see, I get lonely, and it helps to talk. Because that's about all I can do. I'm crippled, and I can't walk. I came back and told him to far up that mic. And I'd talk to him as long as he liked. This was my dad's radio, the little boy said. But I guess it's mine and mom's now. Because my daddy's dead. Dad had a wreck about a month ago. He was trying to get home in the blinding snow. Mom has to work now to make ends meet. And I'm not much help with my two crippled feet. She says not to worry that we'll make it all right. But I hear her crying sometimes late at night. You know, there's one thing I want more than anything else to see. Oh, I know you guys are too busy to bother with me. But, you see, my dad used to take me for rides when he was home. But I guess it's all over now since my daddy's gone. Not one breaker came on the old CB as that little crippled boy talked with me. I tried hard to swallow a lump that just wouldn't stay down as I thought about my boy back in Greenville town. Dad was going to take Mom and me with him later on this year. 
Well, I remember him saying, someday this old truck will be yours, Teddy Bear. But I know I'll never get to ride an 18-wheeler again. But this old base will keep me in touch with all my trucker friends. Teddy Bear's going to back on out now and leave you alone, because it's about time for Mom to come home. But you give me a shout when you're passing through, and I'll sure be happy to come back to you. Well, I came back and I said, uh, before you go, 1010, what's your home 20, little CB friend? Well, he gave me his address, and I didn't once hesitate, because this hot load of freight is just going to have to wait. I turned that truck around on a dime and headed straight for Jackson Street, 229. And as I rounded the corner, oh, I got one a heck of a shock. Eighteen wheelers were lined up for three city blocks. Well, I guess every driver for miles around had caught Teddy Bear's call. And that little cripple boy was having a ball. For as fast as one driver would carry him in, another would carry him to his truck and take off again. Well, you better believe I took my turn at riding Teddy Bear. And then I carried him back in and put him down in his chair. And, buddy, if I never live to see happiness again, I want you to know I saw it that day in the face of that little man. We took up a collection for him before his mama got home, and each driver said goodbye, and then they were all gone. He shook my hand with a mile-long grin, and said, so long, Tucker, I'll catch you again. Yeah, I hit that interstate with tears in my eyes. And I turned on the radio, and I got another surprise. Breaker 1-9 came a voice on the air. Just one word of thanks from Mama Teddy Bear. We wish each and every one a special prayer for you, because you just made my little boy's dream come true. I'll sign off now before I start to cry. May God ride with you. Ten four. And goodbye.